Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this intermediate accounting lesson, I wanted you to know that you can actually download the notes for this section and specifically this lesson that you're about to watch if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or you can head over to the description link that's below and I'll put that link to those notes below where you can find them, download them, and print them, and follow along as you watch this lesson. So go do that, and here is your intermediate accounting lesson. All right, in this lesson, we are gonna be talking about the development of financial accounting and reporting standards. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at the rules associated with issuing financial statements for external users. Kind of looking at who's responsible for all of that, as well as what is the rules that we use for accounting. So let's take a look here at first, understanding the very basic rules that we use in accounting. So in the United States, we use a common set of standards and procedures called GAAP. And typically, if we want to be more specific, it's U.S. GAAP because other countries might have their own generally accepted accounting principles. So just understand that, you know, in our discussion, it might be U.S. GAAP, but in the world, when we think about everybody else, it might be U.S. GAAP. It might be international financial reporting standards. We might have a country that decides not to do IFRS or U.S. GAAP and they have got their own. So just be specific. You may need to be specific sometimes when talking about GAAP, but generally, here, we're talking about United States generally accepted accounting principles. So this is kind of the rules that we go through when we look at the presentation of accounting information for external users. Now, what does generally accepted mean in the generally accepted accounting standard or accounting principles? Generally accepted means uh, either that an authoritative accounting rulemaking body has established a principle for reporting in a given area. So we've got these um, authoritative accounting rulemaking bodies or that over time, a given practice has been accepted as appropriate because of its universal application. If you really think about it, Sure, we have these bodies that come up with gap, but there was a time when accounting was just accounting and people just all went along with it being okay this way. So gap is not necessarily laws that or rules passed by this uh, authoritative body, but it's a combination of the authoritative body and a consensus among most accountants that this is how something should be treated. So a combination of both of those make up U.S. GAAP. Now we're all not looking for absolute consensus here. So remember I said that, you know, generally speaking, we all agree on how this should be presented. Does that mean everybody agrees with how it should be presented? I'm pretty sure you can find people who don't agree with the presentation of certain items on the financial statement. But when we talk about generally accepted, we're not looking for absolute consensus. We're looking for a general consensus that most members of fin the financial community recognize them as standards that are that over time have proven to be the most useful. And remember, what's the key thing that we're doing in financial accounting? We're providing information so that they are useful to external users so they can make invest uh, they can make decisions on investing in the company. So we want to make sure that they are useful at the end of the day to those external users. Now one kind of thing that changed or happened in the last decade or so um, is the accounting standards codification. So we as accounts use something called the ASC or the accounting standards codification to organize the rules in which we must follow for a gap perspective. So kind of bring you back pre-ASC, Pre-ASC, we had all of these authoritative guidances that we had to follow. And, you know, there wasn't this one centralized area. There wasn't the cyclopedia book that you can go to to say, this is the definitive answer on how you should report something. We had to look at all of these options, all of these areas to see if anybody has covered it, if there's any ruling body that has covered it, if uh, what has been standard based on everybody's notion, and then we had ASC. We had the accounting standards codification that came together. And basically, basically what it does is it takes all of those authoritative 
bodies or um, reports or rules and puts it together in something called an ASC. It's like a database with all of the gap. Now it doesn't cover every single gap, but for the majority of gap or the rules that we got to follow, they're in ASC. So it's kind of that one-stop shop kind of a place where if you're looking on how do we report a uh, capital stock, we can go to the ASC and we can kind of see what ASC says. So this is kind of the one organized place where gap is housed. Now, there are some parties to this. So um, when we talk about parties related to standard setting, what we're talking about is who's responsible for setting standards for GAAP. Well, we've got a few here. The first one here is we've got the Securities Exchange Commission. Now, for public companies, GAAP is... Uh, uh, for public companies, the SEC has regulatory authority over U.S. GAAP. So at the end of the day, we can almost say that it's the SEC's job to create GAAP. So they're the ones that are in charge of GAAP, but only for public companies. SEC does not oversee private companies. So SEC, GAAP. Now, what about those private companies? Well, those private companies, that's taken on by the AICPA, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. The AICPA is a, a professional organization um, made up of CPAs whose charge is to advance the profession of CPAs and accountants uh, in the world. And they were one of the largest professional organiz member professional organizations in the world. They have technical teams that establishes gap rules for private companies. So we've got the public companies over on the SEC side. We've got the private companies on the AICPA side. Now, with all that being said, the SEC is not necessarily set up to be the group that establishes U.S. GAAP rules. Really, the SEC's job is enforcement. They're to enforce the laws um, governed by the Securities Acts um, of 1933 and 34, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but um, that's their job is to enforce the rules and laws with securities. Their job necessarily is not necessarily developing gap. And they don't want to do that. They want to be enforcement. So they delegate their responsibility for U.S. gap for public companies, not to themselves, but to the Financial Accounting Standards Board or FASB. FASB is a nonprofit organization that's job is to create GAAP. They do work in tandem with the AICPA, so I wouldn't say that the AICPA is the only one that sets standards for private companies. They get some of their motivation from FASB because what goes for a private co public company probably could be used for a private company. So they kind of all work together. But the FASB is the one that sets U.S. GAAP for public companies. And then basically the SEC just approves it um, and says follow those rules. If it's something that they don't want, they can then make their own administrative changes to U.S. GAAP based on FASB's recommendation for GAAP. Now, the SEC relies on the FASB to develop accounting standards because they're not in the business of doing that. They're in the business of enforcement. Um, so this is kind of the parties that the main parties involved when it comes to standard setting. So the key one here for me is FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board. They're the ones that are responsible for GAAP and then everybody else falls in line to either um, to either. Uh, support it or deny it in other ways. So that is a look at the development of financial reporting standards. Again, we use something called GAAP to dictate how we report data in the financial statement. Uh, we have the FASB that pretty much is the one that issues GAAP. SEC is responsible for it from a regulatory standpoint. And then we have the AICPA whose job is to ensure that private companies are also following a st set standard of rules. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you enjoy what you saw, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to write something in the comment section below like, I don't know, what's your favorite superhero? If you are looking for the next intermediate accounting lesson, make sure you click on this button right over here. And if you want to head to my website and see all of the lessons that are available, make sure you head to my website right here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.